Okay, this will be the third and final part on this. Um, but as far as the bores goes, um, like I said, though, it is it is a pretty rugged piece of equipment. It is waterproof also. So when you're actually doing your batteries and everything, which I'll show you, I'll take it back out before I end this video. Because, like I said, I don't store it with the batteries in there. So it is a, a, a nice piece of equipment to have if you can afford it. Um, it is a little pricey. I think they're going for... Uh, Right around sixteen, just for the without the scope, just for the computer. I think it's around sixteen hundred bucks. But uh, you'll get about thirty hours of battery life on the CR one twenty three battery that's in there. Um, this this side here's your battery side. This the left side your uh, your uh, USB connection side. Um, real quick, I'm gonna pull the instruction book out really fast. This also has a range finder in it. And I can't really use it inside the house here, unless I was at the range, because I don't have enough room to use it at. This actually has a range finder in it, and if you, uh, I don't know if you can see that real well, there's the range finder page. It tells you how to use the range finder on it, it tells you how to turn it on, and it tells you, it'll tell you, say you got a target that you're not sure where it's at, you go in and estimate the, the target height, say it's three foot, six foot tall or whatever, and then, uh, You'll enter that into the bores, and then you do a, uh, an up and down. Uh, you'll you'll put the crosshairs on the bottom of the target, and you'll hit hit your uh, enter button, and then you go to the crosshairs to the top of the target, and hit your enter button again. Then the bores will calculate uh, the range to the target, and it'll tell you, okay, say it's ten hundred or one thousand twelve yards to the target. Then you just dial your little readout until it says 10, one thousand twelve yards, and boom, you should be on target. Um, I haven't had a need to use the range finder yet. I haven't, because I've been at ranges that I've known the distance that I've been shooting at, whether it's 100 yards, 250 yards, or whatever. I'm going to, I'm hoping to go to a, I'm got to wait for the place to reopen, because they've been closed for the winter. Pretty sure that they closed uh, for winter time. Uh, it's a place that I'm going to go to is 750 yards. It's not a thousand yards. That's my my goal to find a thousand yard range where I'm at. Um, but 750 is no joke either. So I'm hoping to have some video on that here soon. <clears throat> and some of the stuff that I'm explaining with the bores, it's a little bit easier to show it to you. Actually, I'm shooting it than it is to sit here and try and explain it. It's sitting here in my house, sitting on my dining room table. But uh, just really quick, uh, like I said, though, you'll when you get your bores, if you buy one, like I know 155 millimeter, he's he's gonna get one eventually, and I know. And all I can tell him is play with it. Once you get it, play with it. Um, and that'll, that'll, that's how I tell everybody when they buy something like a computer or whatever. I could tell you all day long how to use it, but until you actually get it and you actually play with the thing, that's that's where you're going to learn everything on it, how to use it. You'll pick up stuff real easy with this, though. It's, it's really simple to use. Um, you can change your whole library on this particular model on the bores. Um, I do know through the grapevine, I don't know if they're going to do it anytime soon, but I think Bores is the Barrett company is working on a, a windage program for the, the Bores system also. So I'm hoping to see that sometime in the future too. Um, I don't know though. We'll see what happens with that though. I don't know how they're going to do it or whatever or how that would work out. Okay, real quick before I keep rambling on and talking about crazy stuff. But like I said though, it's really easy. Once you get your rifle zeroed in 100 yards... That is, the bores will take over and and go from there, and I and whenever I go out shooting anyway, I always check my zeros on all my rifles that have scopes. I check them anyway, even though this will probably never change as far as the zero goes. I still still fire one or two shots down to double check. That's just me. Other people people's mileage may vary, but that's just how I do it. Even though I know that this is zeroed at a hundred yards and it's not going to change unless I physically screw it up somehow or take the knob off and and reposition it or do whatever. One thing that they do say, though, like I said, if you lose power on it, whether your battery dies, or if you end up having to use the, the elevation knob without the bore system on, you may want to go back when you get a new battery in it or get it fixed or whatnot, uh, recalibrate it to your scope again, and then re-zero your rifle. Just to make sure that you're not firing off into the wind when, you, when your, tar your crosshairs are on the target. That's just, just a couple little uh, hints to use on that. Um, Real quick, I'm going to turn the bores off really quick. And you know, the programs and the, the menus and stuff are really easy to go through. The book, the instruction book is the loads to have. It tells you every little little 
trick on this thing that to use. It tells you how to access every little thing. It tells you how to change the the backlight uh, duration. It tells you how to uh, change your cartridge selection. And if I were to take this off and put it onto another rifle, I'd just go in to that uh to the menu, find uh the cartridge that I'm gonna use. Like uh one five five wanted to know about his AR. You go in and find the two the the uh two two three round that you're using, the cart the uh cartridge that you're gonna use for the your AR, the bullet weight, the muzzle velocity, and you'll find you go in and find that on your menu. You enter that as your cartridge selection and check your zero, zero your rifle in, and take off from there, and then the boards will take off from there. So it's really easy, you just gotta interchange. I know guys that do do that. They use uh, their their bores and their scope on one rifle one day, and then they'll take it out and put it on their 308 the next day, and they've got, there's uh, like 20 different cartridge selections for the 308 already installed in this. There's uh, six or seven for the 50 BMG that are already installed. There's a few for the the 416 that are installed in here. There's a there's a bunch of around 338. There's a some few of those in the, that are already uh, preloaded into the bore system. So a lot of times you won't even have to go in and build your own table. But I know a lot of guys that that do do that. They reload and they they come up with their own uh, caliber or whatever. If you can, it doesn't matter if it's a, an off caliber like a. I saw a 9.75. I think it was at at. Uh, Bass Pro Shop the last time I was there or no it was Cabela's it was an old World War II gun and if you can come up with that you can actually build a ballistic table for the bores and you can put that information into here and then that would be your your cartridge then it doesn't matter what caliber it is as long as you know the muzzle velocity the bullet weight and a ballistic coefficient you can you can go from there and uh, the internet is your friend when it comes to stuff like that you can go on the internet and find out pretty much anything you want to on anything. But, uh, yeah, like I said, though, the software on here is really easy to use. It downloads really well, easy onto your computer. It's really easy to read. Um, like I said, once you get it and you play with it for a little bit, you'll be like, wow, this is easy. It's just it's just like hitting the staples, that was easy button. But uh, other than that, uh, real quick before I run out of time again, I'm trying not to do another part on this. Uh, I told you I had bought uh, some, uh, I'll push the, sorry about the shakiness of the camera, I'm moving the bipod legs up. Um, I told you that I had bought some uh, rail covers, and the reason I bought my rail covers for my rifle here. Sorry about the shakiness, guys, I really apologize for that, I didn't mean to shake it around so much. But, uh, see, a lot of guys were complaining because when you had your uh, handle on your uh, rifle, it was actually dinging the corners of the the rail here, since uh, this is a full rail, and you have to. I had to move the handle for my uh, scope because the center of the rifle is right there, where that little grease mark's at is right in between there. My scope's a little too big for that. But now I had my handle off of here for the longest time. And, you know, I, I wanted to put it back on there. Because it is easier to just grab this and grab it by the back and, and take off with it and move it around. And what I did with rail covers is, is, I don't know if you can see that there, I took them and put it there. So now it's holding the actual handle part off of the rail. And it's not hitting the rail anywhere to where it's going to ding up my rail. And it's also holding the handle off the far side here, off the actual rifle there so it's not whacking against the side of your rifle and it's not hitting the rail over here either that's why I wanted the rail covers and it's funny I only needed one rail cover but I had to buy a whole pack of them so I guess I have a few spares no big deal so that's all guys um, if you got any questions let me know and I'll answer them for you I know I missed a lot of stuff on this I'm just uh, I'm no guru and I'm not a tactical expert I just enjoy it so uh uh, see you guys around. Thanks a lot for all the subscriptions. And uh, 155, if you got any questions, buddy, give me, give me a shout, and uh, I'll answer it for you, all right? I'll talk to everybody later. See ya.